In this video, we will practice using trigonometric identities to rewrite expressions in equivalent forms. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.12. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. In a previous video, we learned these trig identities. Pause the screen and practice writing them from memory. On the AP exam, there will be no formula sheet, so you just have to know these. Maybe make some flashcards or something. From this point forward, I'm going to assume that you have these memorized. Also, pause the screen and make sure you know each one of these basic trig identities. Number one, let f of x equal 1 minus sine squared x times secant x. Rewrite g of x as a fraction involving powers of cosine x and no other trigonometric functions. Um, they meant f of x. The factor 1 minus sine squared x reminds me of the Pythagorean identity sine squared theta, well, let me just use x, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. If we subtract sine squared x from both sides, we get cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. So let's substitute cosine squared x right here. Now we have f of x equals cosine squared x times secant x. Let's rewrite secant x in terms of sine or cosine. So we have cosine squared x times. Secant x is 1 divided by cosine x. But now we notice that we have cosine x in the denominator and two of them in the numerator. The cosine x in the denominator will cancel out one of the two cosine x's from the numerator, leaving behind simply cosine x. And that's it, we have rewritten f of x using only cosine x. Number two, let k of x equal cosecant x over cotangent squared x plus one. Rewrite k of x as a fraction involving powers of sine x and no other trigonometric functions. This is one of three versions of the Pythagorean identity which we have memorized. So, cosine squared x plus one is equal to cosecant squared x. Let's make that substitution. So we will have k of x is equal to cosecant x divided by cosecant squared x. The factor of cosecant x in the numerator will cancel out one of the two factors of cosecant x in the denominator, leaving behind 1 over cosecant x. Well, we know that 1 over cosecant is equivalent to sine. And that's it. We were supposed to rewrite k of x as a fraction involving powers of sine x. Well, I mean, technically it's a fraction because uh, it's over 1. But the, uh, the point is it's written only using sine x and no other trigonometric functions. Ta-da! Number three, let h of x equal cosine x minus cosine x times sine squared x. Rewrite h of x as an expression involving cosine x and no other trigonometric functions. Hmm, sine squared x is part of the Pythagorean identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So I really want to rewrite everything in terms of cosine. So let's get sine squared by itself by subtracting cosine squared from both sides. We find that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. So let's make this substitution. Right now, we have an expression that only involves cosine x. However, in AP Precalculus, you do have to simplify as much as possible. So, let's distribute the negative cosine x throughout. Make sure you include the negative sign when you distribute. Negative cosine x times 1 is negative cosine x. Negative times a negative is a positive and cosine x times cosine squared x is cosine cubed x. 
but here cosine x and minus cosine x cancel each other out. That leaves simply h of x is equal to cosine cubed x. That's it. We have rewritten h of x using cosine x and no other trig functions. Number four, let k of x equal one minus sine squared x times secant x. Rewrite k of x as an expression involving secant x and no other trigonometric functions. One minus sine squared x reminds me of the main Pythagorean identity. Subtracting sine squared x from both sides gives us cosine squared x is equal to one minus sine squared x. So let's substitute cosine squared x in for one minus sine squared x. So far we have k of x equals cosine squared x times secant x. Remember, we are trying to rewrite k of x as an expression involving secant x only. And we do have secant x right here. So we just need to rewrite cosine squared as something involving secant x. We know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. In other words, we know that secant squared x will equal one over cosine squared x. But this relationship is a two-way street. If secant is the reciprocal of cosine, cosine is the reciprocal of secant. In other words, cosine squared x will equal one over secant squared x. So let's substitute one over secant squared x for cosine squared x. We get one over secant squared x times secant x. And this is like secant x over one. Finally, the secant x in the numerator will cancel out one factor of secant x from the denominator, leaving behind one over secant x. And we've done it. We have now written k of x as an expression involving secant x and no other trigonometric functions. Number five, let j of x equal secant x times cotangent x times cosine squared x. Rewrite j of x as a fraction involving powers of sine x and no other trigonometric functions. I think I will use my primary strategy of rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine, and then let's see what happens. Secant x can be rewritten as one over cosine x. Cotangent x can be written as cosine x over sine x. And then we have cosine squared x, which I will simply write as cosine squared x over one. We have a cosine x in the denominator and in the numerator. So these two will cancel each other out. And uh, that's going to leave behind cosine squared x over sine x. So we need to somehow rewrite this using only sine x. We can accomplish this using the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to one. I'd like to replace cosine squared x with an expression involving sine x. So let's get cosine squared x by itself by subtracting sine squared x from both sides. Cosine squared x is equal to one minus sine squared x. Just make this substitution. Let's replace cosine squared x with one minus sine squared x. So that's one minus sine squared x over sine x. And that's it. We have rewritten j of x as a fraction involving powers of sine x and no other trigonometric functions. Number six. Let m of x equal secant squared x times cotangent squared x over cosecant x. Rewrite m of x as an expression involving powers of cosecant x and no other trigonometric functions. We already have cosecant x in the denominator, and that's uh, what we are trying to get. So let's leave cosecant x alone. However, let's rewrite the factors in the numerator 
in terms of sine and cosine. Kabam! Now we have 1 over cosine squared times cosine squared x over sine squared x. We notice that there is a cosine squared in the numerator and in the denominator. These two factors will cancel each other out. So on the next step, we will have m of x is equal to 1 over sine squared x all over cosecant x. However, 1 over sine squared x is cosecant squared x. So let's make that substitution. We now have m of x is equal to cosecant squared x over cosecant x. The factor of cosecant x in the denominator will cancel out one of the factors in the numerator, leaving behind simply cosecant x. How elegant. We have rewritten m of x as an expression involving only cosecant x and obviously no other trigonometric functions. The figures show two circles centered at the origin with angle measures alpha and beta respectively in standard position. The terminal ray of angle alpha intersects the circle at point P and the terminal ray of angle beta intersects the circle at point Q. The coordinates of P are negative 3 comma negative 4 and the coordinates of Q are 15 comma 8. Before we evaluate these three expressions, it's going to be useful to find the values of sine alpha and cosine alpha, and sine beta and cosine beta. So way back in topic 3.2, we learned that sine is y over r. Uh, the y value here is negative 4, and r, the radius, is 5, right? That's the radius of the circle. So we have negative 4 over 5, that is sine alpha. What about cosine alpha? In topic 3.2, we learned that cosine was x over r. So that'll be negative 3 over 5. Now let's switch over to sine and cosine of beta. Sine beta will be y over r, so that's 8 over 17. And cosine beta will be x over r, so that will be 15 over 17. Number 7. Find the sine of alpha minus beta. This is a memorized rule. The pattern for the sine of alpha minus beta goes sine cosine minus cosine sine. So let me say that more slowly. The sine of alpha minus beta is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha times the sine of of beta. It helps me remember the formula if I repeat the pattern to myself very quickly, sine cosine minus cosine sine. Now all we have to do is substitute these values into the expression. So sine alpha was negative four fifths, cosine beta is 15 over 17. And then we have minus cosine alpha is negative three fifths. And sine beta is eight over 17. I see a like denominator coming, whatever five times 17 is. You will likely not have a calculator, so don't try to use a calculator right now. You might do something like this. 17 is 10 plus 7, so 5 times 17 is the same as 5 times 10 plus 7. That's 50 plus 35, which is 85. Or you could do uh, 17 times 5 and do an algorithm. Anyway, our common denominator is going to be 
85. We have negative 60 over 85 minus negative 24 over 85. Minus a negative is really addition. So as I combine the fractions over the common denominator, I will write negative 60 plus 24 over 85. Negative 60 plus 24 is negative 36. So that's the final answer for number seven, negative 36 over 85. Number eight, the memorized rule for cosine alpha plus beta has the pattern cosine cosine minus sine sine. Notice there's a sign change here from positive to negative. So let's write down the formula. It goes cosine alpha times cosine beta minus, again, notice the change in sign, minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. This is just a rule that you have to memorize. Now let's substitute in each of these expressions. The cosine of alpha was negative three-fifths. The cosine of beta is 15 over 17. minus sine alpha is negative four-fifths and the sine of beta is eight over 17. We have the same five times 17 that we saw before. So we know the common denominator will be 85. We have negative 45 over 85 minus negative 32 over 85. Minus a negative is a positive, so keep that in mind as we combine the fractions using the common denominator. We will have negative 45 plus 32 over 85. Negative 45 plus 32 is negative 13. So that's the final answer. The answer to number eight is negative 13 over 85. For number nine, we will not need a fancy memorized rule. Back in topic 3.2, we learned that the tangent of an angle is the y value divided by the x value. So looking at this intersection point, y over x is simply eight over 15. That's it. Easy peasy. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.